Shy Silverleaf and welcome back to another video in my short row series. This time we will be covering our left edge wedge. Now this is a little more complicated, believe it or not, than our oops, where'd that come from? Our right edge wedge. In that with the left edge wedge, we need to use a method similar to the wrap and turn method in knitting. Now Please don't judge my knitting. I know I'm horrible. You don't need to emphasize it. Okay. With the wrap and turn method in knitting, you knit up to the point where you are ready to do your wrap and turn. Oh, come on. Man. This is why you haven't seen any knitting videos yet, because let's face it, I am horrendous. <laughs> very, very horrendous. Okay, we're gonna do one more back loop. I know it's supposed to be front loop knit. I do back loop knit. <laughs> Told you I'm terrible. I have a cousin who works magic on the needles. I am not her. Okay, what you do is you bring the yarn to the front, you slip, slip, you slip the stitch somehow. Okay. Uh, turn your needles around. My apologies to those knitters that I am doing this wrong. I told you I'm not a knitter. Okay. Ah, about to lose a stitch. Okay. Now, let's see. We brought it around to the front. Oh no, we didn't. We slip it. Bring it around to the front, slip it back on the needle, and then we bring the yarn around back and purl our way, yeah, purl our way back. Come on, you. Yes, I know I need to watch some videos on how to knit. <laughs> I have a bunch, I promise you. I hope you're getting as big a laugh out of this as I am, because I, like I said, come on, you! And it's getting tight again. Darn! Well, you knit your way all the way back. Come on, baby. Or, excuse me, purl it all the way back. There we go. I will rewatch those videos, I promise you, and work on my poor, lousy knitting. Come on, you. I used to be somewhat okay. I don't even know if you'd call me somewhat okay <laughs> right now. I just count my lucky stars when I make it to the end. Woo! -hoo! And I didn't drop a stitch. Yay! Yeah, isn't that terrible? All right. I was supposed to mark this. This is the wrap stitch. Okay. Then, we fumble our, I mean knit our way, yes, fumble our way back in my case. Okay. Now. Um, ba -dum. Okay. Ba -dum. Ba -dum. Ba -dum. It takes me four times as long to knit anything, and the only stitches I have done are garter, stockinette, reverse stockinette, and oh, brioche. I kind of like brioche. That's kind of fun if I could find the right cast on for it. But that's okay. Don't judge my knitting. Okay, so we're going to knit my way very pathetically back up to the marked stitch. Come on you. There we go. Okay. Then we slip as if to knit, uh, bring the loop up, slip it back, pray we've done it right, and then knit two together. Go. Come on. Yes, I know I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this badly. Please don't shout at me over this. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. Boy, that was a mess. Um, where 
is that supposed to go? <sighs> okay, I think something just went horribly wrong. Ah ha ha, something did. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, try this round two. Ding! Okay, take that out. Go inside both loops. Yarn over and pull it both loops over the one. And we have the same results. What am I doing wrong? Let's try with the other one. It's supposed to when it's done right by an ex by a very talented person who is not me. Um it virtually disappears. Let me try lining those up a little bit better, okay? And then bring it back and yarn over. I know the basic method. And we still did a terrible job. You get the general idea is what I'm trying to shoot at you. Come on. Goodness. It's a disaster. Quite the disaster. Oh, my, my, my most sincere apologies to you, knitter, shaking your... I can hear you shaking your heads at me at how horrid this is. There we go. I'm a crocheter. Okay. That's why this needle doesn't move. All right. When it's done correctly by someone other than me, this disappears. I am not. <laughs> okay, but you get the general idea. Now, I can do it a lot better with Tunisian. That I can promise you. Okay, now, with working flat, of course. What color? Eh, we'll do orange. Alright, have everything ready. In simple stitch, I don't do it on the foundation row. So that I have a little more stability in what I'm doing. And this will be a success. That I can assure you. Because this I've done a few hundred times. Yeah. Number one, working the kinks out. Number two, over the course of recording, re-recording, and re-recording yet again, this ever-loving series. Okay, now with the left edge wedge, the left edge, of course, will be fatter than the right, hence left edge wedge. Okay, I'm picking up my row one as normal. And my salvage edge as normal. Okay, you're going to pull through one. Now this time, instead of going all the way forward and stopping short on the forward pass with the left edge wedge, we are actually going to stop short on the return pass. And that's where it gets kind of funky. So we're going to start with a regular return pass all the way back. Well, not all the way back. Remember, we're going to stop short. Okay, and you know what? Let's make this a little closer. Okay, there we go. We're going to stop right there. Now, here's where it's similar to knitting. We're going to need to do the wrap and turn method similar to knitting. So grab your cable needle of approximately the same size, and you are going to take the last two loops off of your hook. The one that you just worked and the one in front of it. Okay. You're going to stick them on your cable needle. Okay, and hopefully without losing a thing. Now you're going to take the yarn and you're going to move it in front uh, around, excuse me, uh, around the cable needle from the back to the front. Okay, 
so that it wraps around it and you can see where my wrap is at. Don't worry about the tension quite yet. It's gonna be a little loose until a couple more things we need to do. Now, you're going to take the loop that you just wrapped and return it back to your hook, but only that loop, because we still haven't finished quite finished wrapping it, okay? So now we have the last loop that we did the return pass with, okay? We're going to take the working yarn and we're going to go in between our cable needle and our hook to bring it, wrap this one stitch only and bring the working yarn back to the rear of the work. Okay, once you have that done, the lonely little loop on our cable needle goes back on the hook without losing it. There we go. Okay, and now we have a wrapped stitch. So go ahead and mark it right here and now. Okay, and this is where you want to pull it just a little snug. Okay, so we have our loops that are yet unworked. We have our wrapped loop and we have our return pass loop. Now, below the return pass is the stitch we just worked. We're going to ignore that and go to the one next to it, okay? We don't want to add stitches. We want to keep the same number of stitches that we've got at all times for this. So work your next stitch right there, okay? And you're going to pick up stitches all the way back to the return pass. Not the return pass, all the way back to the salvage edge. Okay. And as you see, when I figure out new techniques in Tunisian, it generally tends to be a combination of both knitting and crochet. I've got a lot of crochet videos, but even more knitting videos, because that is a wonderful mystery to me. Especially entrelac. That absolutely fascinates me to no end, and I am not happy with the Tunisian entrelac out there. To me, true entrelac has that lovely crisscrossing kind of woven look to it, and the Tunisian entrelac goes in the same direction, so I don't like it. And I'm working to change that. Anywho. All right, we're going to return pass back as normal to our next short row stopping point. And this one, it doesn't, with simple, it doesn't matter how far apart, close together, how close it is to either end, the beginning or the salvage edge, you can put them like right side by side and you still be good. Now this time I'm going to put this one right up against it. Okay, so that the wrap stitches are side by side. So I'm going to stop here, take out my trusty old cable needle, take the last two loops off of my hook without catching a stitch marker in the process. There we go. Okay. Now once again, we're going to bring the yard yarn excuse me, from the back around the cable, well, between the cable needle and the um, hook to the front. Okay, we're not worrying too terribly much about tension right now. Take the stitch you just wrapped off the needle onto the hook, leaving the last loop on there. Now, we get our yarn straight. We take our working yarn from the front, between the hook and the cable needle, to the back, retension it up, and take the last loop and put it on the hook. And set that aside. Now we mark our wrapped stitch. Okay, snug it up just a little. Remember, you are not going to work the stitch directly below the last one on your hook right here or it could be the first one depending on which direction you're counting okay this is the last stitch we worked we want to go into the one next to it so ignore this for now and go into the one next to it okay making sure you keep tension just a little snug 
in the rest of your work so that you don't have too much play when we go to fix those here in a little bit. Now, forward pass all the way to the end. And I'm going to do four of these just because the last one I'm going to put right up against the salvage, right next to the salvage edge, just so you can see. And normally I don't prop it up on the table and work the salvage edges, you see, but it's there. Why not? Okay. Return pass back to where you want to stop. Or, excuse me, the stitch before where you want to stop. Yeah, that looks good. I want to stop right here, so I stop just short of there. Take your trusty old cable needle. Put the last two, the one you just worked and the one you want your short row to be on, on your cable needle. Bring your yarn between the cable needle and the hook around to the front of your work. And I just dropped it completely. Put the stitch that you want to wrap back on the hook, sliding the last one on the cable needle back so it won't slip away. Now I'm holding these together so it's easier to show you. Find out what work, play around with this, find out what works for you and go with it. That'd be great. Take your um, working yarn from the front of your work between your hook and cable needle to the back. Put your last loop back on your hook. Okay, retension it up. Mark your loop, because this one could get kind of lost, especially in a textured stitch. Okay, tension it up and make this just a little bit snug than the rest. Sn I want to say tighter, but just a little bit tighter, you know, kind of snug. All right, you're going to ignore the stitch, the last loop on the hook, you're going to ignore the stitch that it's connected to and go on to the one next to it and pick that one up. Like that, see? Ignored that one and picked this one up. And go all the way to the end and you rinse and repeat with all the short rows that you need. Okay, normal salvage edge. Ah, that was not normal. And there's the sideways bean. There we go. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over pull up another. Now this time we are going to do the one directly next to it. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to take my cable needle, put it in the last two loops on my hook without losing anything and transfer them to the cable needle. Okay. Now once again we're going to take our working yarn and I'm holding both of them together in my hand going between the hook and the cable needle bringing it forward, transferring the stitch we want to wrap to the hook, okay, sliding the last one, in this case the salvage edge, to the middle of the cable needle so it doesn't slide away. Then we take our working yarn and go between the hook and the cable needle, bringing it to the back once again where it needs to be, and transferring our last stitch back onto the hook. Okay, this might get a little loose. We're going to mark it and I am going to give it a little extra tug to pull this stitch nice and snug again. And then as you saw, I pulled it kind of snug there. Okay, and now Okay, now that we've done working all of our short rows, here's where the, um, where are you? There you go. The left edge wedge and the right edge wedge are very similar. Okay, 
what we do is normally we would yarn over and pull through two to continue. Okay. We want to fix, or not fix, we need to deal with each of these wrapped stitches so that they disappear. So you're going to take, you're going to work up until you come to your wrapped stitch. Don't work your wrapped stitch just yet. You're going to take the last two loops from your hook onto a cable needle. Once again, there you go. Okay. This time, what you're going to do is you are going to take the wrap. Now, this is where the stitch marker comes in handy. Okay. Um, I just grab my stitch marker, pull it up over the needle, and you're going to want to put it in between your stitch that was wrapped and the last stitch that was worked. Now you're going to transfer all three loops back onto your hook without losing anything. Now the salvage edge can be a little ah, tight. See, it just slipped right off. So I'd be careful doing it right next to the salvage edge. Now what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over and pull through three. Okay. Make sure the stitch marker of the odd loop, and that's what we're going to dub this is our odd short row loop, is in the front. Okay. Now we need to work our return pass as normal until we get to the next wrapped loop. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way back. Okay, and we stop just in front of it. Okay, don't work it just yet because we need to bring our wrap up so we can deal with it. Okay, so put the last two loops, your wrap stitch and the last stitch worked onto your cable needle without losing anything. Okay, push it to the other end of the cable needle. Come on, you. Take your wrapped loop. Now I'm holding on to the wrapped stitch, okay, so that I don't lose it while I'm pulling this up. Pull your wrap up and over and position it in between your stitch and your return pass loop. Okay, so this is now our odd loop. Put the three loops back on your hook. Ah, don't go anywhere. And don't have a heart attack if something slips off the cable needle. Just don't pull anything tight and you should be able to recover it quite nicely as you saw. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. Our return pass loop, our odd loop, and our stitch next to it that was wrapped. Okay. Now we're going to yarn over, return pass as normal, all the way back. Okay, we've come back to this one. So once again, we're going to transfer the two loops onto the cable needle without losing anything this time. Okay, transfer it, push it to the other end of the cable needle, holding on to the last loop on there, pull up our wrap, position it nice and neatly in between the other two stitches. Make sure your stitch marker stays in the front because it keeps trying to flip to the back. And then transfer all three loops one by one back onto your, sorry about that, um, back onto your cable needle, back onto your Tunisian hook. That's where we're at. Yarn over, pull through the three loops, the return pass loop, the odd loop, and what was the wrapped loop. And then rinse and repeat for every single one until you get to the end of the row. Now I like to push the, as you've noticed, I like to push the unworked stitches kind of way back far from the end. Sorry about that. Far from the end so that they don't accidentally slide off while I'm trying to deal with this mess. Okay, and it is okay to drop it while you're dealing with this mess. So once again, you make sure it makes it in the middle, which the stitch marker, oh come on, the stitch marker comes in handy 
helping you kind of tug on it a little. And then transfer it back. Okay, now I'm going to set that back because we are done with that bed. I'm going to yarn over, pull through three, I return pass, our odd, and what was the wrapped stitch. And then, continue to the end. Okay, now, exactly like our right edge wedge, we are going to work the next row, ignoring our odd loops. See, I haven't moved the stitch markers at all. Oh, stop. Okay, we've come up to the stitch just like before. We're going to ignore the our odd loop, so I'm putting my thumb over it so I only get the stitch in front of it. Ignore. Putting my thumb over the odd loop so I only get the stitch in front of it. Ignore. Grab the stitch after it. It's only the odd the odd loops that we are ignoring. And then forward pass all the way over to our next short row. Ignore the odd loop. I like to stick my thumb over it and simple stitch. Ignore it. Grab the one next to it. See, remember this does not have a stitch connecting to it underneath. This forms a nice little line. one. We're ignoring the odd loop and grabbing the stitch in front of it. Flipping this over and getting the return pass on the other side of it. Making sure that our hook goes behind the sideways V. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then just return pass back normal. And as with the right edge wedge. I don't like removing the stitch markers until I have a good three, four rows between where I'm working and where the short rows are so I don't get all mixed up with the odd loops thinking that there's st stitches. All the way back. I'm going to do one, whoop. both or two, not three. And I'm going to do one more. Oh, come on. If it cooperates, I will do one more for you. One more row. Just totally ignoring those marked loops, the odd loops. Pushing the stitch marker out of my way so I don't accidentally put a stitch in the marker. That would not be cool. Could be an interesting effect in a different project, but as for another time. And if it helps, count your stitches, count your loops on your hook to make sure you have the correct number before you return pass back if you're not sure if you've picked up extra stitches or forgotten a few during the insanity of our return pass, or excuse me, short run. And examine the results. We flip these, let's actually remove the two of these, these two. You can see that it goes across which blends in pretty well with the return, the ones that have just a return pass in between and almost vanish completely. As far as holes, there are none. See, not a one. 
and I love that. Not even when you put them side by side. See, I'm pushing pretty hard, and there is zilch behind there. Very, very nice. Okay, and that is all there is to the left edge wedge for um, simple stitch. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. Join me next time when we tackle the left edge wedge in textured. As you see, I have gotten some side by side and really close. Well, a little bit of a gap there, but not too terribly much. You can see, looks pretty good there. All right, join me next time for that, and I will see you then with Hook at the Ready.